Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Sunday morning devotional from our author, N.T. Wright. And the book that he wrote is called Lent for Everyone. And this is his year A, which covers the Gospel of Matthew. This morning, let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything you have given to us. The challenges that we have fought through have cemented important things in our hearts and minds. We pray, Lord, above all, we would hold your values closest to our hearts, that your kingdom values would override everything else we think and feel and do. We pray, Lord, that you will now open our hearts and minds to receive your word as it's brought to us from the pen of Tom Wright. We thank you for him and pray your blessing on his ministry. It's all in the the strong name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Well, friends, the Christ candle is lit and uh, you can see a little bit of light coming in from over here. It's uh, uh, well into the day and I, I, uh, I hope that you have come to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, my name is David Fullen. I'm the pastor of the Drakesboro United Methodist Church and the Jurgens Chapel United Methodist Church. And it is by their generosity that I'm able to do this recording. And I pray that it would be of help to you through the through the whole season of Lent. I think the devotions go through the Friday following Easter. So please stay with us and enjoy the scriptures and Tom Wright's uh, ideas, his thoughts as we as we go from day to day. Here now is the reading for Sunday. It is uh, week one. We begin the week today on Sunday. It is week one of Lent. And uh, the, the reading is Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayers to you at a time of distress. The rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, 
but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Here are some thoughts from our author, Tom Wright. A long time ago, when I had just learnt to drive, I ran out of petrol on a lonely country road. You can tell he's British, right? I gratefully accepted some fuel from a nearby farmer. What he didn't tell me that was that it was a mixture designed not for a car, but for a lawnmower. I got back home all right, but the next day, the car behaved like a sick animal, coughing and spluttering. I made it down to the local garage, where the mechanic explained that the wrong fuel, uh, the, the mechanic explained what the wrong fuel does to the engine. There was thick, messy stuff in the carburetor where there should have been clear petrol. He cleaned it out, and I felt, and it was as though the car felt a huge sigh of relief. Even to hear the engine running smoothly was a delight. Now I was free again. Free not to have to worry about the car, but to think more positively where I might want to go. That is the mood of this psalm. It would be wrong to think of it as some do when the question of sin and confession comes up as a gloomy poem. Some Christian traditions these days seem to do as little confessing as they can in case it spoils the happy mood they want to maintain. But that's like trying to carry on driving while the engine is complaining it's running on the wrong stuff. Confession is facing up to what's wrong. The first two verses of the psalm list four different types of problem. Offense or transgression, the breaking of a known command, sin, missing the mark of genuine humanness, guilt or iniquity, the murky stuff inside me where there should be clarity and openness and deceit. The vain attempt to pretend all is well. A very common problem today. And the reason we do this is the same reason I went to the mechanic. As the psalmist says in verses 3 and 4, it was hard to live like that. It's only then that we discover why the psalm declares that people who confess what's wrong inside are blessed or happy. The psalm is actually a great celebration. It's over. It's gone. It's been dealt with. And instead of the heavy, dark feeling inside, there is a sudden sense of God's presence protecting, rescuing us. Verses 6 and 7. Only then do we discover that forgiveness isn't just a matter of bringing the bank balance, as it were, back from a huge debt to a balance of zero. Once the car has been cleaned out, we are free to hear a fresh call from God, to hear when he whispers and feel when he nudges, rather than having to be treated like an unbroken horse or mule, verses 8 and 9. 
A well-trained horse is one that has learnt to sense the rider's hopes and intentions and even to anticipate them. It is as though the mechanic not only fixed the car, but showed me on the map some wonderful places to visit that I'd never imagined before. That's why the poem closes once again with celebration. Put off the task of confession and the mess will only get worse, leading to all kinds of trouble. But trust in the Lord and that trust will often begin by trusting him with our saddest and darkest secrets. And we will find his love surrounding us. It's like going outside on the first spring morning where suddenly you realize it's not cold anymore. Lent is a time for discipline, for confession for honesty, not because God is mean or fault-finding or finger-pointing, but because he wants us to know the joy of being cleaned out, ready for all the good things he now has in store. Our prayer for today. Father, help me this Lent to confess my sin honestly, and to celebrate the new life which you give to those who you trust. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining. I uh, trust that the description uh, you found to introduce the video uh, has the Uh, web address where you can write me if you'd like to. I would be glad to hear your joys and concerns or if there's anything that I can do for you. Please let me know. And until we meet again, this is Pastor David Fullen for the churches of Drakesboro and Jurgens Chapel, United Methodist Church. May God bless you and keep you until we meet again.